welcome to Optimal Game State. I am still super hyped with the upcoming Legions Imperialis release, but I still don't have models in my hands to paint and build. So like many of you, I'm stuck looking at preview videos and working out uh, on how to build a list. Someone has been putting together a very nice little list building tool, which I have linked in the description. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on some of the infantry profiles. Initially, I'll give a quick overview of some of the systems so we can understand what we're looking at. And then later in the video, I'll look at each of the attachments individually so we can get an idea of how this game works. Here we have a profile for a squad of tactical marines. Top left is a name, top right indicates its infantry and gives a number which indicates a scale. Infantry are at 1, Rhino for example is at 2, Baneblade at 3, Knight 4 and a Titan at 5. The basic profile has move, which is the number of inches the unit can move in advance order, save, which is the number you need to roll on a d6 to avoid a hit, CAF is close assault factor, which you add to your 2d6 roll in close combat, morale is the value you need to roll on a d6 to keep the unit fighting when things start to go bad, and W is for wounds, which shows the amount of damage you can take before the model is removed. Not mentioned is tactical strength. Infantry are 5, Cavalry and Walkers 3, Vehicles 2, and Knights 1, with Titans at 0. You count tactical strength for each model close to an objective when you're trying to find out who actually controls it. At the bottom of the profile, we have a weapon. Let's look at shooting to understand that a little bit better. To shoot, you first select the weapon, and then a target within the weapon's range. Here we can see the bolters have a range of 8 inches. You get to roll a number of dice equal to the amount listed under the dice. And you will do that for each stand. So here we've got a stand of one. If we had four of these, you roll four of these. After we roll the dice, we check the two hit value. And any dice that beat that are counted as hits. So here it's a five plus. So five or a six will beat that. All basic stuff so far. Usually we will have multiple stands of attachment. Although obviously if they take injuries, that'll go down. So we'll get to roll multiple dice. This is the basic detachment of tactical marines, and it gets to roll four dice at eight inches and hit on fives and sixes. For some contrast, here we have the solar auxilias. These are essentially basic guardsmen. They have the same move as marines. The save is one worse at six plus. They have no close assault value, or rather a plus zero, unlike the plus two of the marines, and have a morale of four plus, which is slightly worse than the marines three plus. Their LAS rifles are similar to the Bolters, but have a slightly better range of 10 inches. As we'll see later, the big difference is going to be with the weapon traits, and the detachment is profiled with special rules, which we'll get into. So, if we have a squad of Auxilia versus a squad of Tactical Marines, how is that going to play out? Let's be generous and let the Auxilia shoot first. They've got four dice, they'll hit five or more, so on average these four are going to get 1.3 hits. Sometimes the dice gods will smile on you, the other times, you'll get all ones. We understand how dice claim to work, and we understand how they really work. For each hit, the defending player will roll a dice and compare against their save value. So for the Marines, they're looking to get a 5+, plus, and if they get it, then they ignore the hit. Any hits that go through do a wound, and then you remove a model from the attachment. For most infantry, it's going to be one hit. It's going to be one stand. So we are going to see a lot of people die. Okay, let's say the remaining three marines shoot back. The first thing to note here is they have a special trait with the boulders called Assault. That means if the target is within half range, so within four inches, they get to shoot twice. So let's assume that these three marines are, and that means they'll get to roll six dice and look for five plus. So that'll average out at two. The Auxilia only have a save of six plus, so it's a bit harder for them to survive. Let's assume here they get lucky, and they manage to save one, and they take one hit. If those marines instead had plasma guns and had had those same two hits, which maybe they wouldn't, you can see it's a different range, four plus, they don't have assault, but what they do have here is they've got an AP of minus one, so that's armor penetration. So you take that six plus save and modify it by the minus one, which would mean that the auxilia would have to roll a natural seven, which they can't do. They don't even get to make a roll, the hits go straight through. Again, this is all pretty straightforward, there are lots of other special weapon traits, but the core of it is you roll some dice to attack and get hits, and then the defender 
roll some saves to see if they can you know ignore the hits. Close combat is a little bit different. In shooting, one side gets a shot and then the other side gets a shot. In close combat, it all gets resolved at once. Bases in melee are paired off with each other and the players go through them one pair at a time. Each player rolls 2d6 and adds a close assault factor and the highest number wins, doing one damage to the defender with no save. So this can be pretty brutal. There are lots of additional rules around situations where one side is outnumbered, you've got bonuses for charging and things like that, but this is the, the kind of core element of it. This is all or nothing, so it is going to feel pretty random at times. Even though those marines have a plus two bonus, it's still very possible for the Auxilia to outroll those marines on a 2d6 and get a kill. The 2d6 does have a nice curve and will tend toward those middle values. Two thirds of the time, you are going to see a number between five and nine inclusive, which is to say, you are going to see red when the dice betray you, but over enough games, it should even out. If an attachment takes 50% or more casualties from its starting size, then it needs to take a morale check. If it fails the morale check, then at the end of the turn, it will start retreating. The more elite units, when they get reduced in size, will be able to keep on fighting because they'll have a good morale save. So this 4 plus means 4, 5, or 6 will save it. So when the auxilia take half casualties, there's a 50 50 chance that they're going to be able to keep doing it. One additional thing to keep in mind, I think this is going to end up being pretty important, is if you move your infantry into terrain, they can garrison a building. Now, right now, we have just seen Civitas Imperialis terrain, which you see is that first section. But it does look like they've got others, so maybe we're going to see you know, more terrain lines down the, down the road. But for the time being, that does mean that if you manage to garrison a building, enemies get a minus two to hit them with ranged attacks. So it's a little hard to get hits. In close assault, the garrison in the attachment is going to get plus two to their uh, CAF while holding the building. And they also get advantage of a cover save. So cover saves are not modified by armor penetration and can be used instead of a normal save. So an auxiliary detachment in a garrison ends up with a better effective save than the Astartes and gets a similar CAF to equal them. I'm expecting to see terrain like this to be pretty important. If you can get your detachments into key buildings before your enemy does, it will be hard to get them out. That's the basic uh, overview of the profiles and the mechanics around those stats. From here, we're going to get stuck into some actual profiles themselves and see if we can get a better feel for how each detachment fights. The first stand we're going to look at here is the Legion Command Squad. Currently, this is the only HQ option that they have. Uh, let's go through a bit of it. So the move is five inches, which seems to be pretty standard for infantry. Save of four plus is better than the normal troops. So with no AP, they are going to be saving 50% of the hits. Close Assault Factor is plus four, which seems very good. Morale is two plus, which is basically as good as it gets. And one is always going to fail. And they have a wounds of one. The weapon is similar to normal Bolter. You've got the Assault, which means in the four inches you're going to get the double dice. Light means they can only do damage against infantry, and we're going to see that in a lot of the infantry weapons. And Accurate is a new one. Accurate means they can re-roll any failed to hit rolls. So that's really, really good. Although, you know, that's only going to be for one dice. Oh yeah, maybe two if they're uh, within the range. Looking at the special rules, we've got Commander, which is a limitation. It just means you can only have one commander per detachment. Inspire means nearby friendlies can use their morale. And that's, that's two plus, that's pretty nice. So any bases within five uh, inches are going to be able to use that two plus morale. The invulnerable save means they can always rely on it even if the AP is higher. So in this case, we have a six plus. Normally they'll be uh, saving on a four plus, but you know if there's a minus three, it's not going to wipe it out completely. They can always rely on this invulnerable save as a backup. It is a backup. It's not an additional rule. Master Tactician is a pretty interesting ability. When this detachment activates, it can give a friendly detachment within six inches a new order if that detachment hasn't activated. So essentially, it just replaces an old one. It gives you a little bit more flexibility if you, you know, need to switch things up and react to what's happening on the table. And last up, they have Medicaid, which gives all units within four inches a feel no pain. So a feel no pain is a five plus roll after you take a wound to just ignore. So this would be an additional, uh, essentially a save roll 
after you've already taken that save. A pretty cool unit, but you only get one per detachment, so you're not going to see a lot of these. The Auxilia have similar. In fact, they have two versions. This is the more expensive of the two. Although compared to the 25 points for the Legion Commander, it's already a lot cheaper. The save is pretty low at 6+. Plus. CAF is decent at plus 3, uh, so that's better than the basic Astartes. And morale is great. Again, we've got that 2+. Plus. And in this case, they do have two weapons listed. This is the first time we've seen that here. There are a couple of ways this can happen. So sometimes you have a choice of weapon. So you get, when you're picking your attachment, you get to pick weapon A or weapon B. And if that was the case, you wouldn't see it on the attachment section, which this isn't. This is just the profile. Another case is where you have a weapon that has different options. So the ones we will see later are the missile launchers, where you can switch between frag or crack. In that case, you pick the weapon, and then you pick one of those two profiles to fire with just one. The last case, which is what we actually have here, is where you do have multiple weapons. In this case, they do get to fire all of those if they can. Both of these are light, so they're only going to be affecting infantry. Accurate on the Architect pistol means they get to reroll misses. While the Volkite chargers have something called the flag deflagrate, deflagrate. It's kind of like a reverse accurate, but in a good way. For wounds that get through after the save roll, you get to roll another attack against the same detachment. So I guess if you get a kill, it makes the target explode or something. Then we have a bunch of special rules at the bottom. We've seen most of these. So we've seen Master Tactician, we've seen the Vulnerable Save, we've seen the Inspire, we've seen the Commander. We're going to be looking at the Solar Auxilia HQ part. The majority of the Auxilia infantry, uh, well, maybe not the majority, but certain ones, essentially the core infantry, have something called Chain of Command. That means they can only take the advance order. So no first fire, no charge, and no march, unless they have a Solar Auxilia HQ near them to give those orders. So that's what this is here for. This is here to support your other troops. You'll want to keep these commanders next to uh, your infantry. This is the second HQ option for the Auxilia. It's the tactical command. Obviously a lot cheaper at 10 points. CAF is worse. The morale is worse by one. Um, weapons are just basic reliable rifles. So it's basically just a, a basic HQ. And yeah, we've just got those straightforward space, special rules. So we've got the commander, inspire, and solar Auxilia. So it's nice to have. I believe the previous one, the Isaiah Commander, I think is one per army, maybe. And then the rest of them are going to be these. We'll have to look at the documents again to double check that. But there's a, a cheaper uh, HQ option, which is kind of nice to have. All right, let's look at some actual troops. So these are the tactical engineers. We've looked at them before. We have multiple different weapon profiles here. This is These actually do relate to different troop types. So this one, we're just going to focus on the Legion Bolger. So as we saw from the Auxilia Command, the save of 5 plus is actually quite decent. CF of two, plus 2 seems to put them on the table for close assault, but not as a primary focus. So it's more of a kind of defensive option, I think. Morale of 3 plus is great. Bolter we have looked at already. So if they can get within those 4 inches for the assault, it's going to double their dice, which is going to be really good. It'll uh, help them get a lot of good kills. And meanwhile, though, they've only got that 8 inches. So enemies will be trying to position outside that so if another unit can get them within that nine to ten inch range that other unit will be able to fire on them but the bolter won't be able to respond the detachment is special in that it while you start with four tactical legionnaires with bolters you can add plasma guns missile launchers terminators and or assault marines into that same detachment so you can end up having a quite chunky detachment with a lot of different weapon profiles and bits and pieces Detachments, unless something say, do all target a single target and all shoot at that with all their weapons. So you might find some kind of weird situations where you want to take down a tank, as we'll see later, the missile launchers can do. But if they're in a squad of tactical legionaries, those bolters are going to be firing at the tank, even though with the light, they're not going to be able to impact it. This is the plasma gun option. So basically, they cost different. Uh, you can add them on to tactical legionaries or you can have them as their own squad. That starts at 35 points for four of them. Uh, so 10 range, one dice, four plus to hit, so slightly better than five plus, and minus one AP. The light AT part is interesting. This means that it will work against vehicles, knights, and titans, but the AP doesn't. Against infantry, they're going to have that minus one AP. They can attack 
a vehicle or anything greater, but when they do so, it just kind of says zero AP. Pretty flexible option. You are getting to negate one part of the save, which is quite good. 10 inch range, you know, options. Speaking of options, we have the missile launcher, which has two different profiles that you can choose from. Essentially, you're looking at the frag at the top and crack at the bottom. 20 inches seems like a really good range, so you should be able to get these into a good position on the board and, you know, be able to select targets, which looks nice. Frag has the ignores cover option, which I honestly think is really great. This does two things. So you ignore the to hit penalty for a detachment of terrain, and you also ignore the cover saves. So I think this should be a good way to clear detachments, uh, which are garrisoned in buildings. Now, I might need to double check that, but from my reading of it, I would consider garrisoned being in buildings as counting as uh, terrain cover. And the light there just means it's only going to work against infantry. The flip side is to crack. So here we don't have that light option, which means it is going to work against other things. Okay, so the crack option does have AP minus one, and it's got anti-tank, which in this case means that the AP is ignored against infantry, but counts against everything else. So when you're uh, taking this to a tank, you are going to get that minus one AP, but when you're firing it at you know just some guardsmen, they'll ignore that AP. But it's just one crack missile. We've got lots of lots of bodies to soak it up. Here we have those auxiliaries. So like the legionaries, they have some options. In this case, it's a las rifle or a flamer. So we're going to look at the las rifle first. This profile is probably the most basic one you can get. And when I do say that, do remember that these aren't these are uh, super elites compared to what we would be familiar with the Imperial Guard in 40k. In 30k, these solar auxilias are, I guess you'd kind of qualify them all as elite stormtroopers, something along those lines. The gear they have is exceptional. You know, they've got fantastic training. So this isn't necessarily going to reflect a average human. This is probably the kind of peak of uh, human fighting ability. Anyway, we think this is the one of the more basic profiles. We've talked about that chain of command rule already when we're looking at the HQ, but we've also got this line special rule, which is very, very interesting. It gives them plus two tactical strength, which means that each one of these counts as seven when contesting objectives. That's pretty good. Because yeah, that's how games are going to be settled. The LAS rifles are pretty plain, but it does outrange the humble bolter, which is very nice. And like the tactical detachment, they can have a bunch of additional things added to them. Those options are flamers, we've got some Ogren, and we've got some melee focused Vetitari Axemen, which we're going to get into. All right. First up, we have the flamers. So the flamers are the auxiliary way to clear out infantry from terrain. Again, they've got that ignore cover ability, which will get some good work done. And apart from that, they've got a pretty decent hit um, at 4+. plus. Although that 6-inch range is very, very tight, so that is going to uh, cause some problems. Next up, we've got the Assault Marines, which is the first infantry you've, we've seen with a move of more than 5. So they can move at 7 inches. Their CAF is plus 3, one better than the normal tacticals. Which isn't a, it's not a lot, but it is something. The pistols here are a nice backup weapon, but this unit really is about mobility. The jump packs let them ignore models and terrain when moving. It also gives them a plus one to CAF when they charge, and they would get a normal plus one, so it ends up being a plus two. And then they get an extra plus one when they attack garrison fighters, presumably being able to jump up, let them, you know, assault weird things in the building. It also lets them jump out of aircraft, which is pretty cool. They do have the independent rule. Now, this is a bit of a weird one. It lets each model get a different order if you want. So I believe this lets you charge with ones in range and then advance with ones outside of range. The more important one is that there is a coherency rules in this game and the independent lets the assault marines who must stay within two inches coherency of each other break the coherency with the rest of the tactical uh, marines if they're in a bigger one. You can have your tactical marines and your assault marines, and the assault marines can be up to six inches away, but then they have to be within two inches of uh, each other. So it just lets them roam a little bit further away from the tactical marines to help them actually be usable as a, a assault troops. On the other side, with the auxilia, we have these killers. It might look like these uh, Velatari have power axes, but they're actually tin openers designed specifically for a start days. The plus one close assault factor seems quite low, 
But that Ren special roll they've got in the Power Axes lets them roll an extra dice in melee. So they're rolling 3d6 plus 1. It's a little random, but on average, that extra d6 would count as 3.5. Meaning we expect these to perform a little better than the Assault Marines, at least when it comes to dealing out damage. This is why, when I was talking about the Assault Marines, mobility is really their thing. They are good at close combat, but it's the mobility that is the kind of real factor for these guys. Terminators, on the other hand, are going to be a harder nut to crack. That 4 plus save will be ignored in melee, but to you know actually get them down in melee, you're going to have to beat that plus 4 CAF. These are going to be pretty hard to kill. They have the same combi bolters as Commander, which has Accurate and Assault, which is going to be pretty awesome. So I think that these are going to be a pretty nice all-rounder. They can do melee, and they can do range fire, depending on what is going to work best for them. For special rules, we have a bunch of new ones. The first is bulky. This limits the transport they use. So we're not going to see Terminators in Rhinos. Deep Strike is super interesting. This lets them start in reserve, and they can arrive in the movement phase of the second turn or later by using a scatter dice. Basically, you get to place them. There's going to be a little bit of randomness around exactly where they, they land up in. They're not always going to, they're not necessarily always going to be exactly where you plan. But, you know, it's not going to be too far off. I believe there is a possibility for them to teleport accidentally into buildings, which is always hilarious and terrible. But it does mean that um, you are going to be get these, get these guys where you want them, when you want them. We've already seen the invo save, so know what that is. And last up, we have is Steadfast, which increased their tactical strength by one. So Terminators actually count as six points when uh, holding an objective. As I said, it's a really flexible unit, good at melee and ranged, and the Deep Strike rule means that you can basically have them in your back pocket and use them as problem solvers depending on what develops in the board, but not without some risk. In battle reports that we have seen online so far, we have seen these Karanite Ogrins do some impressive work on the, ba- on, on the field. We can see why now. They have plus three CAF, and those claws have rend. So they're rolling three dice, and they're getting plus three CAF. On top of that, that Furious Charge special ability increases the bonus from charging from plus one to plus two. So that would be 3d6 plus five. And then, because it's melee, you don't get a save against them. So these guys are going to charge in, and they're going to wreck whatever they're going up against. We just have two options left, and I'm sneaking these in with the infantry. The first is the Sentinel, which is nice and fast at 7 inches. This has an impressive range with its missile launcher at 20 and the multi-laser 24 inches. You can fire both, but you must choose either the frag or the crack profile for the missile launcher. Note that that frag missile actually has two dice. So if you're trying to take out some infantry, each Sentinel will have four dice at 20 range with the multi-laser and frag missiles. This model also gets the forward deploy, which gives it a free move for the first turn starts. You should be able to get these into position, and with that nice range, they should have a good chance at taking out things. So yeah, you're going to have a nice little pocket of these, and then you're going to be able to take pot shots from range, uh, hopefully without getting any consequences. So they do, as we've seen before with the missiles, the missiles have to ignore cover or the anti-tank. So yeah, you, you do have a bunch of options. Now, that multi-laser does have light AT, which, and I have to go double-check, does mean that hits scored against vehicle, knight, or bigger, or counts as AP0, but it's already got AP0. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I did double-check the profile to make sure it doesn't have an AP, and this looks correct. Anyway, it looks like it's going to be a good option. Then last up, we have the Contemptor Dreadnought. This is a super impressive CAF of plus five, and it looks like a bit like a Terminator after that. So you've got, you know, similar save, morale, and so on. It has the armor special rule, which means that light weapons AP is completely ignored. And you can reroll fail saves from light weapons. So I guess that might be where that multi-laser is kicking in. It didn't count as a light weapon. With that 4 plus save, infantry are going to find these really, really hard to kill because you are going to get to reroll them. Now, you do have to choose between the assault cannon and the twinkling las cannon. But you always get the inbuilt twin link bolter. The assault cannon has light AT, so that minus one AP is only going to apply against infantry. Rapid fire means that sixes count as two hits instead of one, which you know could be big. And then the alternative is a las cannon, which with 22 inch range, obviously much better. Hits on a four plus, which is better again. Same minus one AP, 
It does have accurate, which means you get three rolled misses, which is super strong. And it's got anti tank. So the AP doesn't actually work against infantry, it only works against vehicles and better. From the sprue, I did try to get an idea of what the options are like. And it does look like they are limited. But I gather from a box of legionnaires, you should be able to build two assault cannons and two lance cannons. As I talked about in the purchasing video, my recommendation is that you should be getting at least another squad of infantry, and I suspect we'll probably do more along with that, which will means you'll be able to group them into two talons, one with just the last cannons and one with just the assault cannons, which I think is probably my recommendation. I think you're probably going to be better off having specialized units where you know what they're going to be going up for. If you'll know you want to get your talon with assault cannons into those infantry to start massacring while the talons with the las cannons you want to get them in a position where they can start taking pot shots and tanks each of them have a twin link bolter it has a great assault rule although the range is a little bit tighter so we're looking to get into three inches before we can get those uh, double dice it is light so um, vehicles ignore it and it has point defense so point defense we'll see a lot more once we start talking about the vehicles very very interesting and has a bunch of special rules associated with it. The first is that you can have the point defense weapons in an attachment choose a different target to the other weapons. So in your Talon, if you've got LAS cannons, the LAS cannons will be focusing on the tank, and then all of the twin link bolters can focus on an attachment of infantry nearby. If you have a advance or march order, you can fire the twin link bolters at the end of the movement phase, but you give up using them later in the combat phase. Lastly, you can fire them as overwatch. So I haven't talked about overwatch yet. You can overwatch with attachment during the movement phase if they have the advance or first fire order and they can see an enemy detachment that is activating. They then shoot at that detachment. Now, normally you get a minus two penalty on that, but with the point defense, that penalty is ignored you do end up giving up their token. So that would mean they don't get the fire later. So in this case, if you chose that option to fire as in Overwatch with your Twin Link Bolters, it would mean you couldn't then fire your Assault Cannon or Last Cannon in the next phase, later phase. You would still get to roll with your other weapon, so your Assault Cannon or Last Cannon, and the penalty of minus two would push it up to sixes. You're always going to hit on sixes. So worst case scenario. Um, but those twin link bolters are going to be a little bit better. You know, you've got choices. The point defense here is giving you a lot more flexibility. The important one of those is it does let you split your fire, which is going to be super, super important as we uh, develop this game. And that's it. We have gone through every one of the infantry models currently available. There are a few more dreads and some batteries which are listed in the rulebook, but the models aren't out yet, so I decided to leave them out for this video. As you can see, the basics of this game are pretty straightforward, but we have a ton of special traits for units and weapons that change things slightly. I think this is definitely something where having a quick cheat cheat on hand would be very handy. And personally, I have referenced one of the Google spreadsheets that someone in the community put together. That might be something that would be maybe worth printing out or just you know saving the, the, the link to so we can quickly reference. Hopefully, this video gives you a good overview of what to expect for each of these units on the table. Right now, it's a little hard to evaluate what's good and what's not. I think we can see some of the basics. Like we can, we can see moves are typically five inches apart from a few fast units like the Salt Marines and the Sentinels. We know that most of the Auxilia save on a six plus, Legionnaires on a five plus, and some of the more elite units like the Terminators are saving on four pluses. We, we've seen that two hits are typically five plus with the occasional 4+. We're, we're expecting to see a lot of mass fire. So we're expecting to see you know, tons of dice rolled. We're probably going to pick up a third of those. Then they're going to get rolled as defense. And then we're going to take maybe a third of those away. And then whatever's left are going to be the hits that we take. Close combat, a little bit different. It is pretty terrifying. It, there are There's a bit of a curve, but there's a large amount of unknown within that. So we are going to have cases where you will feel confident going into a close combat assault, but you will find that the dice just betray you. This happens. It is lethal. Things will die in it. And yet, when we've seen the values of the close assaults um, factor vary from 0 to plus 5, but we also can see that Rend, which we've seen on the Argus and the Velatari, is very, very important. Um, so that extra 3d6 can be pretty terrifying. 
I do think infantry are going to be a key part of this game due to how effective they are at taking objectives. Uh, I imagine much of the meta game will develop around how to clear that infantry out. So we'll probably end up looking at that a little bit more in the next video where we are going to be looking at vehicles. If you enjoyed this, and hopefully you did, make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out for when we go into a little bit more detail and look at the rest of the things that we have on the table. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.